Hello all, this is Dr. Dave Maslach talking about reciprocity.com, the sharing economy proofreading platform that I'm trying to build. The E is spelled with a three. So uh, in this particular video, I really wanted to talk about how do you write an amazing theory section in a scientific article. So I'll put my words in science sort of series I'm putting out or my nerd out Wednesdays is what I'm calling it. This is where I just talk about things that I find interesting in science. I'm a research professor at a large state institution. I study innovation strategy and entrepreneurship and all bunches of different stuff and topics in that area. It's actually a really broad area. And what I want to talk about in this particular video is how do you actually write an amazing theory section? You can see that I'm actually building, there's a series that I'm doing with these videos at this point, trying to build out how do you actually write a research article. And now I'm talking about the theory section. I did do a video earlier about how to actually build theory and you can, and maybe I'll link up to those. But in this particular video, I really wanted to talk about how do you actually write up that theory section and what is the goal with that theory section. So in this particular video, you should be, if you're interested in this, you should be, what I'm gonna go into is how do you actually write up this theory section? What are you trying to do? What are you not trying to do? And then what is the end goal of the theory section? And this particular video is geared towards senior undergraduate students to graduate students, um, and particularly those that are doing a PhD and that are interested in writing research articles and stuff like that. It also is really applicable to writers of all sorts, but this is definitely geared towards more of you know those that are in graduate school because this is advice that I wish I would have had. Actually, a lot of it is advice that I did get but there's, I know that there's a lot of people around the world that don't get this kind of advice and mentorship. So I wanted to tell other people the stuff that I learned, right? So here we go. So how do you write a theory section? Well, what the end up, what the, the goal with writing a, a theory section, it is not about just simply regurgitating all of the relevant theories that are out there. So your goal with the theory section is always focus on the dependent variable in that case. What is the, you know, what are the dependent variable? What are you trying to explain in that point? Um, and it's not to focus, it's not to list like five, six different theories that could explain that, right? So theories being different ways to explain the world and in the, each field is different. So in mine, you know, maybe it's transaction cost economics, for example, right? It could also be sort of um, a knowledge-based view or an, uh, an organization learning view. Um, there is also a resource-based view. There's a bunch of sort of tracks. So the way that science evolves is that they kind of get these trajectories where you get these groups of people that are talking to each other. And those people that are talking to each other, other those are those are people that are building a certain theory. And so what you don't want to do, and the reason why you don't want to do like five or six different theories is because you're going to attract those readers for your reviewers or, you know, it's just going to seem really shallow. Your paper is going to feel like it's really, really shallow and there's not going to be a lot of depth there. And what they're looking for is that these, these scholars that are really embraced, these, these professors that are really embraced in the one particular literature, they're looking for some new insight themselves. And the only way that you can get there is if you build a really strong case for that particular theory, or maybe it's two theories, but generally you focus on one, you're trying to explain that one particular thing, right? Um, sometimes, and the reason why I'm suggesting that there could be two, so the first one, if you do one theory with explaining the dependent variable, the best thing you could do is just really richly explain it and get through all of the assumptions that that theory makes and you know dig down as much as you possibly can within that theory to explain what's going on. Um, if you're doing two, what you're trying to do is you build a case that the one theory is is, is lacking. So you, um, and there might be assumptions that are lacking. And then what you could do is you could substitute the other one on top of it that sort of explains some relationship um, that explains what's going on. So that's how you use it. And the way that you can explain it is either there's two ways at this moment that I know, maybe there's more, I don't know. Um, two simplest ways that 
that we should think about is sort of a, a moderating relationship. This is where something is suppressed or it is um, exacerbated, growing, right? Um, in, depending on, you know, the different sort of conditions that are out there in the other theory. So if you're talking about stuff that happens in the firm, right? Um, maybe the moderating theory is something that happens at institutions. And that's going to suppress that relationship or grow that relationship somehow. And the other way is a mediating relationship, meaning that there is some sort of third variable. So A, so you could think of A leads to B. Well, there is a C variable that is in between the A and the B. And those the C variable kind of explains the different relationship, right? You have to go through C. So A leads to C leads to B in order to actually get any um, results, right? And so that, that's really what you're trying to explain, that there's this mediating relationship. And again, it's probably having to do with maybe that there are certain conditions that something sort of appears um, with this you know, maybe that there is a relationship that happens there, but it sort of, you really need this third, maybe it's a micro mechanism, right? So maybe there's something going on, maybe maybe at the firm you need, so, so you can explain something leads to performance at the firm level, but then maybe you need the certain, you know, micro stuff. So, so maybe the right personnel to explain that. So you need this sort of smaller stuff to explain what's going on, the mediating relationship, right? So that that's the important thing to think about. Um, and really what the theory section is not just kind of like this blah, right? It's not like you're not just writing a bunch of blah on there. What you're trying to do is think about a story. You're telling a story and the end goal when you're telling the story is get to the point where nothing else can solve this particular story and this problem that you're experiencing. You can imagine yourself when you're in a when you're building a theory, when you're building the theory section is you're kind of like a hero. Right. So the hero starts off as, oh, I have this problem. It's so hard to sort of do this and we can't do this because X, Y, and Z, the theory is so limited, but then we walk through this path to the point of like, oh, but wait a minute, this can be solved with this, this other thing that I'm going to show over here. And this is gonna be a great method, this is gonna be great results, and we're gonna see something that is going to sort of elucidate to show what's going on in, you know, in this, in the, that shows the sort of solves that particular problem. So you can think of the theory being, and you're sort of tracing out the sort of hero journey all the way through that, you know, all of a sudden you get to the point where, ta -da -da, right, the hypothesis section and the um, analysis section is the way that's going to solve this particular problem. And that's really what you're trying to do with building a theory section is you're focusing on building that because what you're trying to ultimately what you're doing with a paper is telling a story and you're telling you're trying to hook people through all the way through you want the readers to be continuously wow you know I never thought about that wow you know I never thought about that and all the way through is kind of hook them through and walk them through until the point that they're like oh geez you know I get that I get what you're trying to do that is a real problem and what that's going to do a if you're sort of this is the first version of your paper it's going to give you a revision because what they are looking for, the editor and the reviewers are looking for is somebody that, that is, or, or a problem that is really contemporary, that's important, um, and, and you know that, that this is a real thing, right? Um, if you don't get that, then you're probably not gonna get a revision. And that is the, and then what's gonna happen is that that's gonna get the minds of the reviewers and the editors moving. They're like, ooh, you know, thinking, thinking, thinking. And then they're going to suggest something that is hopefully going to get you to another stage in the game. It's going to get you to another stage. Um, and they're going to sort of push you in a different direction, but it's going to be a better direction. My experience is always a better direction when you get that feedback. Um, so that's it. That's all I really wanted to get into is building this theory section. It's just, you know, don't put a lot of theories all around and all this kind of stuff. And you know, citing broadly sometimes has, so you want to walk people through to the point of, you know, maybe in the, in the theory or in the implication section, you can cite really broadly and cite all these different literatures and theories and stuff that this kind of explains. But at the beginning, you want to walk people through and sort of explain one theory or two theories very, very well. 
Um, you just want to make sure that you are sort of bringing them along and you're not getting them to say, ooh, you know, there's just too much going on here. And as soon as you get that, when you're when they're saying there's too much going on, they're out the window. They have not, they're not paying attention. So I just want you to think about that as much as possible. Condense what you're trying to do as much as possible and just really walk people through to the point where they're like, oh, wow, this person really understands this particular literature, this particular theory very well. And that's all you're trying to do. So if you like this video, do the old thumbs up. Um, you know, if you have other suggestions with it, make sure you do add some comments. Um, you know, I'm, I'm all ears. I'm trying to learn about this kind of stuff myself. I'm, you know, I'm fairly young at this point with this journey, so I'm still learning. And uh, you can watch some old videos too and look to see you know, I'm explaining, trying to explain some of this stuff as well. So that's it. Um, you know, again, this is all part of my reciprocity project. So reciprocity.com, the E is spelled with a three. It's a sharing economy proofreading platform. And I am really looking forward to um, seeing you on the next video. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.